Hello, everyone. You are watching Passion Project, and I'm your host, Kat Margulis. And today's guest is Leonika Valsius. She is a literary agent with Transatlantic Agency. And Leonika represents commercial and genre fiction for adults and children and is the founder of Hashtag Diverse Can Lit and the former chair of the Festival of Literary Diversity. I am so excited to ask Leonika all our burning questions about victory and submitting. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for inviting me. This is so much fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I'm so excited because it is, as a new writer and as somebody who wants to be published and be on bookshelves, have her book on bookshelves, it is like the, the number one burning question is, how to get representation, how, you know, how do I get on those bookshelves, seeing the agent as the gatekeeper for that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's just like, I remember, you know, early on in my process, blogging like crazy, like reading blogs like crazy, um, trying to get all the information that I could. And, um, and you know, I said I was going to start somewhere else, but I'm going to totally jump off because something just occurred to me, sure. which is the thing that blows my mind is we are so, as writers, we're so hungry for agents. And yet I noticed that you guys work so hard getting yourselves out there too, right? Mm -hmm. Like you guys are hungry for writers. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think like one of the most important things I try to tell writers is like, don't forget that you are the industry, right? I, I teach this to my students. I used to teach at um, uh, the Centennial Book and Magazine Publishing Program. And what I would do is I was like, this is the writer and the work that they produce. And this is the reader and the like all of their capacity to read. And then in the middle is the publishing industry. We need to make sure none of it depends on us we yeah. can, our only job is to connect the writer to the reader so without the writer there is no job for us right so yeah. yes we are hungry and desperate to find that great gem um that great uh book that we can push to people like i'm yeah. a book lover first and foremost and I came into this industry because I'm like, who are these wacky minds that come up with these things and how can I just be in their presence? And so I started off in sales um, at a publishing house, but I was still too far away from the wacky minds. And that's how I got into agenting because I was like, I want to sell still. Yeah. I want to be in their aura. How can I do that? And that's how I came into agenting so that I'm still doing a sales function, but I yeah. get to just play in the imagination of brilliant people like yourself. <laughs> that remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that. Um, and I'm curious, like how, I don't know, I was, I'm going to places I didn't think I was going to go, but um, how much, like how, I guess the ratio of, you seeking out writers and readers, uh, writers seeking you out, like, do you find that most of the people that you end up signing are people that you found, you know, you know, boots on the street sort of thing? Mm. Or, or were they just the people that came to you and that you attracted? Like, is it like 50 50? Or how does that play out? You know, I think it depends for every agent. Yeah. Um, it it really depends. I think, for example, I would say like the Twitter pitch contests and writers conferences are more boots on the ground. Yeah. I'm going out, I'm seeking people, I'm trying to talk to them, learn more about their work, and then uh, encouraging them to please send me your stuff. And um, yeah. so I've done that and I enjoy it. Uh, but I also really um, value the query process mm -hmm. because I feel like it's the, it's the not fairest, but most mm -hmm. accessible way. Like, Hey, mm -hmm. this, anybody can send me their work if they think it's a good fit based on what I, I say I'm looking for. So yeah. I would never want to shut that down. I will admit that, um, I want to do more outreach. That's a goal of mine. Yeah. Um, and it's a little bit tricky because I like, I primarily work on fiction. Mm. And so if you're wanting to do outreach 
to find people who are writing fiction, the only way to find them is if they're started published already in a way. Oh, right? that's an interesting catch 22. I never thought of that. Yes, because like for nonfiction, like you could be like, oh, this person is like, has a really cool Instagram and yeah. like they're a great performer or something, or they have a really great blog or a really great YouTube channel or podcast. Yeah. But for fiction, the only way to re- find a fiction writer's writing is they're publishing it in some way, even if it's right. self-publishing or Wattpad or posting it on their blogs. And yeah. that's tricky because yeah. um, like sometimes I've encountered great writing that's just not for me. Um, yeah. And that doesn't mean that their next piece wouldn't be for me. So do I follow that, keep reading that person's stuff until they mm-hmm. write something? Like it's, it's, it's harder. Um, yeah. But what I would love to do uh, long-term is read more literary magazines. I know lots of agents pay very close attention to what's going on in short form and read great essay pieces or short stories and find Mm. writers that way. So Mm -hmm. that's a goal I'm setting for myself. Have you, um, have you, have you uh, decided to work with somebody based on self-published work? Like I have this story that if, you know, I either early on chose, I would like to have an agent or I would like to just take a risk and self-publish but if I self-publish I'm burning bridges like nobody no publisher no agent will ever work with me if I self-publish that is not true they're just different paths yeah um and that doesn't mean you can't do both paths yeah Uh, it just means you have to be really great at both (laughs) and it's a different skill set right because yeah Remember I said, this is the writer, this is the reader, publishing is in the middle? Yes. All the pub- functions are pub- of publishing need to happen. They mm-hmm. must happen. The difference between traditional publishing and self-publishing is who does those functions, right? Mm-hmm. And so just because you're a brilliant writer doesn't necessarily mean you're a great cover designer or mm-hmm. marketer or publicist. Um, and that has to happen. Yeah. So it takes us... Um, a very business minded type of person yeah. to essentially write their creative book, which is difficult and takes its own time and energy. And then also decide I'm going to launch a business and pub- and put this product out into the world and do all the marketing sales functions in order to make it successful. Those mm-hmm. are sometimes different skill sets and they don't always exist in the same human. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do and it's amazing. Sometimes they don't and that's okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, what I, how I like to say it is, you know, finding the path to publishing is always about figuring out what you do best, like what you have the time, energy and mm-hmm. skill set to do. And then the things that you don't have the time, energy and skill set to do finding partners to help you with those. And in a way, looking for an agent is that first step of finding a partner, right? Mm -hmm. The skill set that agents bring is the contacts, resources, market knowledge to connect a writer Mm -hmm. to publishers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and and just out of curiosity, if somebody were to self-publish, and, and you just, you love that. You're like, have you ever, has that ever happened where you're like, I would like to work with you, but it, it would obviously be the next book or you would be mm-hmm. working with that existing book and seeing what else you could create with it. Well, it depends. Yeah. I was, it hasn't happened to me, but I'm also relatively new in my career and still building my list. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know of writers who are self-publishing who Whenever they say, I don't know, maybe I should try traditionally, I kind of poke my head up and say, hi, send me your stuff when you're ready. Um, Hasn't happened yet, but I'm always keeping an eye on them. Um, But yes, essentially, it would be the next work. Um, I don't, you know what, I'm going to say things. And if it doesn't make sense, you tell me and I'll elaborate, okay? So as the agent, I can only help do the things that haven't been done yet, right? So right. if you've already published the book in English and it's available everywhere, well, that you did it. I can't yeah. get you to the publisher. That part's done already. Whether it flopped or not, it's out there, right? 
Yeah. So if if it did fantastic, maybe you can look at, you know, does do people want to read it in French? Maybe. Who knows? Um, or perhaps you have a next project. I'm saying you as yeah. all of you writers. <laughs> yeah. I uh, have a next project that is great. You said, you know, I tried the self-publishing thing. I was great at it, but you know what? Don't want to be a publicist, my own publicist. I'd rather use that time to write. So sure, no problem. Let's find mm-hmm. you a great uh, publishing partner. And then it's not uh, necessarily that different than yeah. being an unpublished writer at all, right? It's just yeah. you have prior credits. And again, I think... It's just like be, having any other publication history. Um, it's just in terms of, I think self-publishing doesn't hurt you. It just necessarily doesn't help you as much as you think because the business, the business models are a little bit different. And yeah. sometimes the audience that you built up with self-publishing doesn't always carry over. Bing! That is <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> So well, that's something one of my colleagues um, uh, shared and pointed out um, as I was discussing, as we were discussing this um, at the agency. And he made really brilliant points um, on something specific, but it's something to keep in mind. It's as if you're a great YA writer. Mm-hmm. And then you, you, your next book is an adult thriller, mm, right? Yeah. It's not that the people don't love you. It's yeah. that they loved you for a different thing. Yeah. So now you, you may have to try to convince those people to come along with you to your adult thriller writing. Yeah. Or you may just have to go find adult thriller writers to convince to love you, right? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a great point. To, yes. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I was sharing with you just before we came on my own story. Yes, let's get into it. Um, which was, you know, um, I, yeah, I had written my first book really, really quickly, and I, you know, you're in love with it when you first, you just think it's amazing, right? When you first wrote it, and I sent it out, you know, sent it with a query letter to like the top agents in the United States. Like I was out of my mind Mm -hmm. and some of them were kind enough to actually, you know, offer a gentle or, you know, rejection letter. And then a couple, well, maybe a year or two later, I took a course with Curtis Brown Mm -hmm. on how to edit and pitch your novel. And there I learned that I did like everything in the book wrong. (laughs) Like it was atrocious what I did in my letter. I was so, I'm like ashamed of it. And um, no, don't be. <laughs> I honestly do not be. No. Be, the reason I say don't be is you can't improve something that you never wrote. Right. Yeah. So, like, honestly, when people tell me that they finished a draft, I say congratulations with all the joy in my heart because yeah. it is so hard to get the words on the page. Yeah. So, your first draft, your first attempt of anything is going to suck. It's supposed mm-hmm. to suck. You can't get better if you don't. Like, yeah. if there's no other endeavor that you try where you expect to be great at it yeah. the first time out the gate. It's, that does, that's not how improvement works, right? So yeah. the only way to get good is to suck, yes. learn how you sucked, try to suck less, less time next time Absolutely. and repeat. <laughs> Absolutely. And I did, I did get better. The course really helped me and I did get eventually an agent. So yay. Um, yay. But I'm curious because there is this, like, you know, I would think like that, you know, you burn those kind of like the self-publishing, like my, I, my go-to is I burned the, the bridges. Like, so if I were still submitting, I would feel, could you ever, go, I, okay, I learned, and I would go back to the same people. Like, have you ever had anybody come back to you, work on themselves, and come back, and are agents open to resubmissions, I guess? No, well, there are, like, two different questions smushed in there, so I'll answer both. So resubmissions, when they, I hear that, I think, are you say, sending me the same thing again? Um, so... Sometimes, but the, so the answer for me yeah. is only if I asked. 
So if you sent me, um, what was your project's name called? The title of your project, do you mind sharing? Oh, uh, the first one, The Hill. The Hill, okay. <laughs> it's a you, sent, it's you sent me The Hill and I read it and I said, oh, yikes. <laughs> um, and so I would have sent you a polite form rejection. It's like, thank you so much. You're a wonderful person. Good luck on life. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't send it to me again. Um, it's it's just, you know, on, well, uh, logistically, because yes. I have a tracker and it yes. would tell me that you had sent me this thing again. Oh. Um, and I would probably just kind of dismiss it. Yeah. So, but if I read it and it'd be like, ooh, not quite, but there's something here, then the, the rejection would be more like, you know, this is not for me at the time. I think it has potential. I would be happy to see your writing again in the future. Then it's fair game, right? So yeah. then you could send me the same project again and just say, hey, I made massive edits. I think it's a lot better. Um, here are some of the things I've changed and send it again. And then it's up to me to decide whether I want to read it, right? Yeah. And then the other option is maybe you sent me the hill. I go, ooh, yikes. And then um, a year or two later, you send me the tree. The tree is something new. Well, I'm going to read it. Like, why not? Like, if the tree appeals to me, that's a brand new work. So okay. it's fair game. Um, and I think that's for most agents where, you know, they will give you the benefit of the doubt with something completely fresh and different. Yeah. Whereas if they saw that if it's the same project, you might need to do a little bit more work to convince them that mm -hmm. it's, it's significantly different from the thing that they rejected before. How, uh, how important is the query letter for you to look at that manuscript? Like, it's very important. yeah. Is it like, yeah, if the, if the manuscript, if the query letter doesn't sell it, you're not even going to look. Yeah. Um, the and it's not the query letter I think of it like the cover letter of a job application mm -hmm. um so the function of the query letter is to convince me to open the pages so it's not to say it has to be amazing like mm -hmm. like amazing don't spend more time on the query letter than you're spending on the actual book that's yeah. not what I'm saying what I'm saying is you want it to be an accurate reflection of your writing skill. So make sure it's as edited and polished as your book, right? Like if you've like, mm -hmm. if the writing is poor in the query letter, I'm going to assume the, like you wrote the query letter, you wrote the book. If you can't write in the query letter, I'm assuming you can't write in the book, right? Yeah. So make sure it's up to the standard of writing. Uh, make sure it commute it communicate what your book is about like that sounds basic but it's really important right like if like you don't want to misrepresent your book mm -hmm. or yourself to the because that's my only judgment if you say you know this is a Oh, I can't even come up with an example. Yeah. Uh, this is a book about a man who goes on a walk with his dog, right? And I was like, well, that's yeah. kind of boring. Never mind. And you don't tell me that on this walk, they, you know, go through to another dimension and he learns mm -hmm. about himself and saves the world. Like, mm -hmm. you didn't tell me all of that. And so mm -hmm. I, I missed the good part. Um, and sometimes people hold back and like, I don't want to give you spoilers. This is not the part to say, oh, I'm holding back spoilers. I'm holding about the, back the good bit. I don't want you to copy my excellent idea. Or I, I find um, writers spend a lot of time sometimes saying how desperately they want to be a writer, how long they've wanted to be a writer, how they've been a reader since they were a kid, how much they love me as an agent, like, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. And I was a lifelong reader too, but tell me about the book and why I should open these pages. And the reason mm -hmm. for that is just simply volume, right? Mm -hmm. If, um, for whatever, re like, if it doesn't capture my eye, the same with a movie trailer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, haven't you ever sat in a movie theater? Like, it's my favorite game to play and watch the preview and be like, oh, that's going to suck. <laughs> that's going to suck. Yeah. Ooh, that might be good. Let's write that one down. <laughs> that's what the query letter is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's and awesome. 
And so usually what I triage is I'm going through my queries and the first thing I do is I only read the query letters and the ones that it doesn't interest me based on the premise, I reject just based on the query letter. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, because even if the writing is great, the premise is not for me, right? Like mm -hmm. if you tell me this is about, you know, Jack the Ripper yeah, yeah. and, you know, how he became Jack the Ripper. I was like, no, thank you. No, mm -hmm. merci. That's probably a fantastic story that I will never read. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. So, and that's important too, right? Like you want mm -hmm. it to accurately portray your story, yourself and your skill set, so that the people who are really interested in that will be like, ooh, that's perfect for me. Mm -hmm. And the people who are really not interested in that don't even waste their time. Yeah. And, and how important is, you know, we hear all the time, like, you know, writers get to do more of their own marketing, their more, you know, like they get to be promoting themselves and their book, like, how important it is, is it that they have this and that Twitter following or Instagram or how active they are on mm. any of these platforms? Because sometimes I'm like, you know, just personally, I'm like, okay, I get to keep working on this. And then sometimes I'm like, you know, somebody just had a breakaway book and they've got nothing on Instagram and it blows up. So I'm like, well, maybe you just wait for it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm kind yeah. of like. Um, there are different goals and different questions. If your question is how important is your social media following in getting an agent then the, that is more, it depends on fiction or nonfiction. Nonfiction, oh. it's kind of important. The yeah. reason for that is in nonfiction, you're, also, you're not only pitching the topic and the idea, you're also pitching why people want to hear it from you, right? right? Like the idea with nonfiction is like, these are facts. Anybody could write about these facts. Mm -hmm. Why should you be the one to write about these facts and why will people listen to you? So mm -hmm. in that case, yes. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be social media. It ha can be, I have a PhD in this. Mm -hmm. People will listen to me. Or I have a newsletter that has this many clicks or this many subscribers. People listen to me. Or podcasts with whatever yeah. platform, right? So platform or expertise. Yeah. If it's fiction, that's not going to necessarily... Um, can like that's it's not going to help get you yeah. an agent, right? It's not yeah. going to help you get get you an agent because if you're funny on Twitter and you have lots of followers, that doesn't mean people want to read your literary fiction. Mm -hmm. It just means they love your cat memes, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And it doesn't even mean you write good literary fiction. It means yes. you find really funny cat memes. Yes. So it doesn't translate in the same way. Right. Um, so my, for fiction writers, my advice in terms of it, whether or not including that platform information in their, um, in their pitch, I don't think it's that important. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt. If you mm -hmm. have a bajillion followers, cool, include it. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, if you have none, don't mention it. You don't have to. It does. It's not going to hurt you either way. The writing yeah. is key for fiction. Um, yeah. The writing, and then I get into like work ethic and style and vibe and things like yeah. that when we're actually talking. But remember, the query letter is just trying to get me to read the pages. Yes. Telling me you have a bunch of Twitter followers doesn't tell me that I should read your book. Yeah. Um, whereas. If you are, for example, somebody, I've been following a lot of um, uh, people in the gentle parenting space, like mm -hmm. some of them are mothers, some of them are parents, some of them are uh, psychologists, and they're, they are talking about different, how to raise kids in a more less spanking, more talking kind of way. <laughs> Um, and I'm like, this is really interesting. Yeah. So for that, if you tell me I'm a clinical psychologist who's been working with children for 15 years, yes, that does convince me to open your pages more than yeah. I'm a mom. I have two kids yes. <laughs> and I love posting their pictures on Instagram and, yeah. me and, and my family members. Like 
It's like, yeah. that's wonderful. That's sweet. I'm, I bet you're a great mom. Yeah. But I don't know if you necessarily are the person people should turn to for advice. Does that make sense, that distinction? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love how you kind of started to touch on um, the other things that you're considering. Like, I didn't think that you're already thinking about that. Like, how are we going to work together? And, you you know, you mentioned work ethic and things like mm -hmm. that, um, which I find really interesting because I haven't seen a lot of stuff on that. And I'm curious, like, what is your relationship like, or what is the agent writer relationship? Like, Ooh, great question. Um, this varies for everybody. And I think during our pre-chat, you said, should I be interviewing my agent? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so this is the part, this is what happens at the call, right? So presumably, and I think this is why you don't hear a lot about it because it happens after the query letter has passed muster, after the pages has passed muster. Right. Um, the assumption is you get a call and they say, I wanna represent you. And then you say yes, and then everything's great. But that's not, at least in my experience, um, the call is more like, I want to get to know you and see mm -hmm. if we can make this happen. And then you want to get to know me to see if I'm actually the right person. Yeah. Um, because if like an, an, the, your relationship with your agent can potentially be a long one and it would be really um, problematic or if you didn't like working with them, <laughs> right? Because this is a person who, let's say even if you only work on with them on one book, if that book sells and it takes about 18 months to get from your computer to the bookshelf, mm. <laughs> you're working with them for at least 18 months. And then if that yeah. book sells well, you're now working with them for like the whole time that royalties are coming in, right? So that's, and that's for one book, presumably. Yeah. Let's say you're an author who wants to write multiple books. Let's say you want to make this a, your whole career. Let's say you want to make a living of just being yeah. a writer. This agent might be working with you for a long time and, and pretty closely in a professional capacity. Yes. So I think it's important to really know yourself as a writer and know what your needs are. Like, mm -hmm kind of career are you trying to build? Like, did it, when I said, make a living off your writing, did that excite you? Or like, okay, no, that's actually not what I want. I really love my day job and I want to stay with that, which is completely legit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If somebody says, oh, I want you to travel the world, does that excite you? Or is that not what you want, right? Like you have to have a clear idea mm -hmm. of what you want. And it's so funny. I, I, I love asking rooms of writers of, what is your goal? And they're like, I want what everybody wants. And then they set, they spout something very specific to them as an individual. <laughs> and so I asked the person next to them, like, well, I also want, want, want what everybody wants, which is something completely different. Amazing. <laughs> um, so knowing what you want and need is really yeah. important in helping you find the agent who can help you reach those goals. Yeah. And so what I've learned is I know what kind of writer I am best suited to help um, because of the types of things that fire me up. For example, mm -hmm. um, I like commercial stuff. I'm a popcorn reader. Like I, I describe, I like beach reads. I like books that you, that make you crack up laughing. I like the kind of stuff that you read with like a cocktail in your hand and a big sun hat on. That is my jam, right? And I want to sell lots of copies. It's not that it's not that all agents don't want to sell lots of copies, but for me, when a writer says, if my book can just touch one person's heart, that will be enough for me. <laughs> it's not enough for me and yeah. that person is completely valid and I actually know colleagues who would love that writer but not it's not me because I'm yeah. like what am I doing if we're only working for that one person <laughs> just print it out and hand it to them then <laughs> I'm like I want us to be on Oprah <laughs> like, <laughs> Whereas I love others that. might find that to be 
you know, unrealistic or somebody who's like has too, not necessarily too, or like who's um, like sometimes, you know, it, it feels like, oh, why do you want to be on Oprah? That's not realistic for you. But I'm like, yeah. I want to be on Oprah. <laughs> like that's, let's go there. Right. But yeah. I also want a writer who's kind of a hustler, right? Yeah. So it's somebody who's like, okay, that didn't work. What else are we going to try? Love that. Um, yeah. And not everybody has that personality and not everybody needs to have that personality because again, other agents are different than me. Mm -hmm. um, so the key is finding the agent who is a good fit. Yeah, I do not, like for example, I, I don't give out my number. <laughs> you don't call me and don't text me. Send me an email and we'll schedule the time. Well, that's what, um, that's what I'm interested to hear too. Like, um, you know, what what do agents do? Like, what can you, what can the writer, in terms of when they're thinking about what do I need, what do I want, mm -hmm. what can even be their expectations? Because like, is it just, you know, getting the book deal? But if you're saying it's like, it's an 18 month, it could be a two year, it's a three year, what is the agent doing all along? Great question. Mm -hmm. Again, I will talk about myself. And, yeah. but essentially your, your agent is, helping you shepherd this book from your computer to publication and making sure that you are comfortable all along the way that things are going smoothly, uh, uh, troubleshooting any problems. But an agent can also, if that is the relationship you want, um, really help you guide your career, right? So let's say you are a person who does want writing to be their full-time job, right? Mm -hmm. And so we talk about, okay, what, what, maybe we do talk about your social media platform. What do we need to do to maybe, maybe you were writing nonfiction and the book, book is brilliant but your social media is not up to snuff yet mm -hmm. what can we do to talk it's not that i'm going to do it for you yeah but i'm certainly going to talk you through it do we need to hire somebody do we need to uh do you need to take a class on instagram i don't know i think that's mm -hmm. i'm not sure but I just <laughs> <laughs> oh there you go um take cat's class right so there are or maybe it's um figuring out um other avenues it's like are you a person who likes to do school visits for kids writers? School visits are a really big part of not only how they get their income and how they do publicity, but another way to, to keep that book alive. And mm -hmm. is that something that you want? How do we build your website? How, like all of these things. Mm -hmm. And then oh, the best writers, <laughs> many writers are like full of stories all the time. And so it's like, great, you have 10 books on the go. Let's prioritize. Let's sit together. Yeah, so will you, you, you guys do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it's fun when my clients are like, so I know I was supposed to be writing this, but I actually am writing this instead of like, cool, no problem. And it's actually fine because I am i don't like to rush the creative process. I. Yeah. I'm a little, I, I believe it's sacred. I say yeah. the creativity comes when it comes until you're on deadline. Then we need to pick up the pace, right? So sometimes yeah. I, I do, I like to do check-ins. It's like, hey, your deadline's coming up in two weeks. So are, are you good? Or do I need to like cover for you? Like, what yeah. are, so what are we doing here, right? So check-ins like that. And then really figuring out, okay, you maybe, maybe you were YA and now you want to write adult thriller. So we figure out that transition. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to write it under a pen name? Do you want to keep your name? Like, what what are what are we doing here? We're gonna have to do another interview. <laughs> there are so I want to talk about things. pen names, but not today. But I want to talk about pen names. Right. But essentially, what I'm saying is, your agent in an ideal wonderland where your agent could be your business partner in building your your writing career right mm -hmm. so that is I think is why it's important for the writer to interview the agent and say yeah. is this a person who's who I trust do I think that their goals are aligned with mine do I think they their values are aligned with mine and do I trust their expertise that they will always um 
be pointing me in, in the right direction because you never want to be in a business partnership with someone Mm -hmm. and then constantly be micromanaging them Mm -hmm. or checking up on their work being like oh I don't know if that thing that they told me was right let me go check like yeah think about it if you were going to go into business with somebody you wouldn't if you felt like you constantly had to go call people and say do you think what they're saying is legit yeah you would say you know what let's let's not Yeah. Um, And I think that's important to remember because that's exactly what it is. It's a business partnership. I don't like the marriage comparison because it's not that. They're they're not your spouse. They're also not your therapist. I don't like that comparison either. But it is a business partnership where um, both parties are committed and uh, working hard for a common goal. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I just, I just, it was a revelation that people would even interview the agent, you know what I mean? Like, we're just so, you know, excited and, and hungry for it. And mm-hmm. um, that there would be questions or things that they could ask to, to ensure that they get the best possible match, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, back to query letters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm like, um, I, I'm, you know, what are some do's don'ts for people on the query letter front yeah um for you like what's that you know um yeah I mean I you think, kind of mentioned some like make sure there's good writing make sure mm-hmm. it tells the parts about your book but is there like anything where you're just like oh no 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 another one of those guys yeah I think a big don't is um don't bash don't bash like just don't don't put things down because mm-hmm. that actually doesn't make you look better. Yeah. Um, so, and I, ha- I've had to learn that lesson in general of just like how I speak about other things. Right. Like it, it doesn't like, I remember it, it, this happens in YA and romance, which both areas I represent, but it can happen in all sorts of genres. Right. Like don't say, Oh, you know, this genre is so terrible and so mm. full of problems. And I finally written the book that will fix all of those problems. Well, I don't know. Now you've got me, my backup. It's like, first of all, yes. Mr. Sir, yeah, I don't like your tone. <laughs> and do you really think you're going to fix it? I'll be the judge of that. Like, right? Like it's already uh, yeah. uh, adversarial, right? And you've now cleared a bar for, created a, a bar that you have to um, clear. Yeah. So don't bash other things. Don't, uh, don't say my book will be like X if X was good or like, don't like, just don't do that. It's not necessary. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's better to point out things you admire and then things that you don't. Yeah. Um, and the uh, same speaking thing- of which I was just thinking about comps. I was listening to a podcast uh, the other day about, you know, comparison text, like using that to hook the agent, you know, it's like this and like that. Um, and can you dig yourself into a hole by doing that? Because then the, the agent expects, you know, this or that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's can be recommended to help them. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I think, I think, again, it depends. Comps are important. Yeah. Um, because... Comps are important to situate your book, like to give it context. And I think the best way to come up with comp titles is. um, Snap everybody, listen up. (laughs) Yes. If if it's permitted in your area, wherever you're watching this, to go to a bookstore or a library Mm. uh, safely, don't touch anything, put your mask on, go to a bookstore or a library and go to the section where you think your book should be. Hmm, that's and, great. And look at the books there. Bookstores mm-hmm. are ideal. Library works too. But library is in alphabetical order usually. So you kind of yeah. want to go to the bookstore because they're ordered mostly by genre and stuff like that. So go to the area where you think your book should be and look at the books there. Mm-hmm. And then like picture the person who's buying your book 
Mm-hmm. Like create a little book stack for them. It's like, okay, they're buying this book, they're buying this book, they're buying my book, and they're buying this book. So like, what is the stack of books mm-hmm. that reader has? That's great. Because I think oh, that's that really great. best comp. And the reason I say go now is because the bookstore has the books that are selling right now. Yeah, Not the yeah. books from your childhood that you loved growing <laughs> yeah. up. Uh, it's great. <laughs> Anne of Green Gables is not a comp for your book. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Harry Potter is now over 20 years old. I'm so oh sorry. Oh my God, that's crazy. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so just, you know, go yeah. and see what the what's on the shelves now and what it compares to. So that's an important comp. And yeah. I see your... Um, your point about about it could dig a hole yes so there was a comment on that another agent a brilliant agent um made a comment saying that hey you know we shouldn't have to tell you this but it's still happening so don't comp your book to lord of the rings or harry potter and people were like but why (laughs) and so and it's a valid question because like they're like but it is yeah and the here are the reasons why when there are two main reasons, right? And I break it down into what comps are. Again, rein me in if I'm going in too deep, okay? Yeah. Um, so there are two types of comps. There are editorial comps and sales comps. An editorial comp mm-hmm. is uh, the comparison about the book's contents, like the themes. Yeah. So my book is like this book's in terms of their character. My book is like this book in terms of tone. My Mm -hmm. book is like this book in terms of the themes. That's an editorial comp, right? The sales and comps are more like my book will sell to a similar audience as this other book. Okay. So I like those because those are the ones that say there is sales potential in my book. And because I'm a salesperson, so I'm always leaning towards those. And that's kind of the type of comp you get when you do the bookstore trick. Following me so far? Yeah, that's spicy. Okay, so then let's say you've now said your book is like Harry Potter. So you've said your book is like Harry Potter. The person's reading, they're like, okay, is it like Harry Potter because magic? Because they're wizards? Because there's three friends? Like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and now even Twilight and Fifty Shades were such, so big and so influential that some of their distinct elements are mm. now just tropes of the genre. Right. Do you see what I mean? So like, yeah. do you, like, Kat, I don't even know what you write. <laughs> so I ask all these things out and they're like, do you- I'm, I'm like, still figuring it out. <laughs> do, are, like, give me a hint so I can use oh, girl, references I'm, that are I, references I was that like, are kind of rom-commy dramedy. Oh, okay, and, great. And the great, next great. one's psychological thriller. So I'm gonna need some coaching. <laughs> Your agent can help you with that. Um, so, but do, like, I remember in um, in YA, there was this whole moment where like the girl has to be enter the competition to get this guy, right? And bef- when the first, it was first done, it was fresh and new and interesting. And then yeah. by the 10th one, it's like, okay, this is like a, a trope, right? Yes, so yeah. now like, they have to be sorted into different factions was, mm-hmm. I guess you can say it was fresh and new when Harry Potter did it, but now mm-hmm. it's very common. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me that your book is like Harry Potter because there's magic and it's at a school and people have to be sorted into different factions, what that tells me is you haven't been reading in your genre. Wow. Because there are many more contemporary books that are still doing that. Yeah. So like there's more recent books you could have compared yourself to. Right. Okay? So that's on the yes. editorial sound. Yeah. So maybe you said it's like Harry Potter because you think it's going to sell like Harry Potter. Did you remember that Harry Potter was part of the opening ceremonies at the Olympics? Do you think your book is going to be at the opening ceremonies of an Olympics because it will be that much of a cultural reset? Yeah. And here's the thing. If you're saying the audience that read Harry Potter, will that bought Harry Potter 
will also buy my book. Is that enough for me to know who that audience is? Because that was literally everybody in 1997, (laughs) right? So now, like, I don't know how to target my marketing or my sales. Like, I don't know how to pitch that person because if I say, this is for Harry Potter, like... (laughs) Everyone, yeah. right? So it's yeah. not useful. It's not doing the thing you want it to do. It's not telling me more about your book. It's yeah. not telling me that you understand your industry. It's yeah. not helping me target the correct reader for your book. So that's why it's not useful. That is awesome. There was so many golden nuggets in there. Thank you. You're and um, which begs the question, what are you looking for? Uh, yeah, what comps or what genre? Well, you said YA, but I'm sure like people who are listening or watching definitely want to hear more about you. Oh, for sure. So I represent commercial and genre fiction for children and adults by writers of color. So what that means is I like fun, escapist, um, popcorn like blow stuff up. (laughs) Um, I just like big emotions. Like, of course, everything is has to be well written, because we're writers, and we care about our craft, not we, you you all, not me, I'm not a writer. (laughs) Um, But you are writers, and you care about your craft. But I love the cheese fest. I'm currently watching Never Have I Ever on uh, Netflix. And it's about this girl, Davy, who is a disaster and makes all the wrong choices. And I'm just like, oh, you precious child. <laughs> and oh, we'll have to check that one out. It's so good. It's uh, that's what kind of stuff I would love to see in YA. Um, I loved Crazy Rich Asians. I oh, yeah. love Shonda Rhimes work. <laughs> I just like very over the top. Um, I'm currently closed to submissions and will probably be closed for the rest of the year. Um, But my next round, uh, where I'm trying to grow my um, list for the next round will probably be in the romance, rom-com, women's fiction area. I love a good family saga. Pachinko um, is a fantastic book that like, sweeps over decades and generations about this Ooh. one family uh, in Korea and Japan. And it is just beautiful. And I, I'm, I'm a sucker for their family sucks. And here's how they deal with it. It's like, oh, great. <laughs> I want to know all about I'm gonna, it. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. yeah that's Pachinko yeah. is fantastic. I'm thinking of uh, Ghana Must Go by... T- um, let me Google it on my computer right here. Yeah. I'm going to write down Pachinko. Um, I remember that book, Ty Selassie. I got that right. That book, the writing was so lush and beautiful that I called my friend to read her paragraph. I was like, you have to hear this. Um, but it was also about a family that was messed up. They had, like, they did the, the classic, you know, the patriarch is dead. Then we're forced to. <laughs> interact with each other and here's the drama that comes out of it so yeah. I, I love I love that the turnout house by Angela Flournoy um it's the matriarch is dead but the they have to figure out what to do with this house and they like they're trying to figure out should they keep it in the family and it kind of follows each of the family members of like why they want to keep it or why they want to sell and oh the, that's great it's, it's that's nice just story. so well done yeah. Um, so that, that's as close to literary as I get. I say that yeah. I have like Oprah and Reese Witherspoon's taste of literary fiction. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good company, right? Not yeah, totally. Obama. Obama's a little highbrow for me. He likes fancy <laughs> stuff. I'm a little bit more <laughs> accessible. No, I love it. I love it. Oh my God. I'm going to have to bring you back because I, I'm sure I could do another hour with you. Um, <laughs> this is so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing today um, and just like sharing all your insight and behind the scenes knowledge. And thank you all for watching. Um, 
And yeah, we'll see you soon. This, I'm like, my, my, my brain is going now. <laughs> Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. This was fun. I remember I asked you, I said, are we, do we have structure? Or is this going to be a fun conversation? We had a fun conversation. <laughs> that was great, Lanika. Thank you so much. So great to spend time with you today. Hang tight. I'll be right with you. And as for the rest of you, love you. So great to see you. And um, this will be on the website and there's more to come. So I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.